Welcome to Math with Mrs. Cox. We are on chapter 6 on the review page on 467. I'm going to help you out with the vocabulary and a few of the problems on the review, but there are several you're going to have to finish and work out on your own. So do your best. All right, number one, the commutative property. Let me get this on markup so that we can write the answers on this. The commutative property is where the order of the factors that are multiplied does not change the product. Do you see that somewhere? Yes. Right there. Compatible numbers. Compatible numbers are numbers that are easy to multiply mentally. Okay, identity property. Identity property is the product of any factor n1. Associative property is the grouping of factors that does not change the product, so f. That was a funny looking f. Powers of 10. Numbers like 10, 100, and 1,000 that can be written as 10 to the first, 10 squared, or 10 to the cubed would be D. And rounding, probably the last one, B. Rounding is finding the approximate value of a number. Okay, let's begin. All right, on number seven, estimate each product, which they mean they want you to estimate to find the product. So look at $4.80. Is that closer to $4 or is it closer to five? So they want you to do $5 times five. Don't forget that dollar sign in there as you finish that problem. Number eight. Look at 3.36. Is that closer to 3 or is that closer to 4? Okay, finish the problem. Number 9. We have 10.8 times 7. Now, is 10.8 closer to 10 or is it closer to 11? Okay, finish the problem. Multiply and check for reasonableness. So, they want you to stack it like this. They want you to forget about the decimal. And then after you have multiplied it out, they want you to tell how many place values the decimal point went over, and that's where you put your answer. And when you check for reasonableness, you can just estimate. So let's estimate together. 1.8 is really close to 2. 2 times 6 is really close to, to 12. So your answer is going to be around 12. Okay. Number 11. Go ahead and multiply 4.6 times 5. Make sure that you um, check for reasonableness by saying that 4.6 is really close to 5. 5 times 5 is 25. So your answer is going to be somewhere between 20 and 25. Okay, let's go over to 12. So now they have several different numbers behind the decimal. I want you to just ignore them, multiply it out, and on your answer, you're going to go over 1, 2, 3. So on your answer, you're going to go one, two, three spots before you put the decimal. And to check for reasonableness, we're going to say 7.16 is really close to 7. 2.1 is really close to 2. So your answer is going to be around 14. Okay? Multiply, tell which property you use. Okay, so you always do what's in the parentheses first first. Okay, you might need some graph paper for this. And it looks like they are associating certain properties. So 
We're going to write associative and associative, but don't forget to tell me the answer, and you're going to have to figure it out. Okay, number 15, estimate the quotient. So 20.6, is that closer to 20, or is it closer to 20? Well, let's think about this. Let me back up. We're doing compatible numbers. I wish they would have said compatible numbers on this. So a number that's really compatible would be 20 divided by 4. Finish the problem. Number 16, what is compatible with 8? 24 works really well with 8. Finish the problem. And on 17, I would say 120 is really compatible with 10, and that's something I can figure out in my head. Finish the problem. Number 18, divide and check for reasonableness. Okay, remember 10 squared is like saying 10 times 10, which equals 100, and there's two spots there. So then our decimal spot comes over two different spaces. All right, write the new number. Same with 19. We have 1.8 divided by 1, or excuse me, 0 0.08. Ooh, how many spots are we going to have there? This one's a little tricky. So we are going to have it, this one's really weird. So this one is 22.5. And we didn't cover that, so there's the answer for that one. Okay, number 20, we have this number right here, 6.2 division bar, 12.71. So now remember, you need to move that decimal point over one and that decimal point over one. So you're really gonna do 62 division bar, 127.1. Now you can figure that out without having that really crazy division bar. Make sure to put the decimal right there. Okay, there's your help for the review for this page. Okay, number 21. Keisha bought seven pounds of mozzarella cheese. Each pound costs $4.29. Ooh, look what we need right here. About how much did he spend all together? So let's go ahead and round this. We have seven pounds of mozzarella cheese and $4.29 is really close to $4. Finish the answer and tell me how much money this person spent. Ariel buys two fish tanks at the pet store. Each tank holds 9.7 liters of, or excuse me, how many liters of water will she need to fill both tanks? Okay, this is where you're going to do 9.7 times 2. After you multiply that out, you're going to come back one decimal point to find out what the answer is. And you're going to mark the answer in liters. That's how much the units you are measuring. Brain Builder. Ooh, I love it. Let's figure it out. It costs $4.24, excuse me, $4.25 for one pound of roast beef and $3.75 for one pound of ham. How much will it cost to purchase 2.5 pounds of roast beef and 3.5 pounds of ham round to the nearest cent? Okay, so this is where you're going to do $4.20, $4.20. Five. and you're doing roast beef and you're times that by 2.5 so 2.5 so you multiply that out and you remember ignore the decimals first and then when you're all finished you come over one two three spots one two three put your decimal point okay and you're gonna have to round to the nearest cent which means you're probably going to round to the nearest penny. Think of it that way. Okay, then we are doing, that was roast beef, and ham is 375. So 
so I'm going to get black. So $3.75. And we have ham, 3.5. So we're timesing that. 3.5. Now, remember your answer, you're going to come back one, two, three. One, two, three. And remember, you're rounding it to the nearest penny after you multiply all that out. Okay. Number 24. Let's give you a little help with this one. Describe the pattern below. Write another pattern that has the same fourth value. Describe your pattern. Ooh, okay. So I'm looking at this, and 41 and is half of 82. 82 is half of 164. So I'm saying the pattern is multiplying by 2. So see if you can figure out the pattern. So we're, what you're going to do is you're going to take that number, and you're going to times it. Write another pattern that has this, the fourth value, the same fourth value. All right, they're, they're going to get a little tricky with this one. So I'm okay if you just put times 2. Number 25, the total bill for a dinner party was $134.03. Marcus pays $20.45 of, of the bill. The other people at the party divide the remaining amount equally, and they each pay $12.62. How many other people were there at the party? Okay. So, we're going to take this number and subtract that number, okay? One thirty-four point three. When we're subtracting, we have to line up the decimals. We're going to subtract for that amount. That's going to give us a number, okay? Then, whatever number that is, we're going to divide it by this number, and that will tell us how many people were at the party. Good luck with that one. You can use graph paper if you need to. Number 26. Sophia paints a rectangular mural, mural on the wall. The area of the mural is 128.52 square feet. The mural is 12.6 feet wide. What is the height of the mural? So the mural is rectangular, and we, th we know that it is 12.6 feet wide. What is the height of the mural? So what you're going to do is you're going to take 12.6, and you're going to divide it into 128.52. And what they see here is they want you to see that you need to move this decimal point over one spot and this decimal point over one spot and that will be a lot easier to figure out. Now, don't panic because you have all these numbers over here that you can f use to even multiply by 126 to see what your answer can be. Alright, do the best that you can and turn this in. Thank you.